If you're listening or watching this, you are part of the resistance and it is time to celebrate everybody. Welcome back to the resistance broadcast. I am John Hoey. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is a wonderful Monday morning here in the resistance space. And the reason why I said celebrate is because it is official that Star Wars Celebration is coming back next year at the end of August, August 27th through the 30th. We're going to get into all that a bit later. And um, we're, I'm excited about that because the moment that I left Celebration, I knew I wanted to go back and we are going to be heading back. But we'll, like I said, we'll get into more of that later. We have a lot of news to get into. Also, it's a good time to be a Star Wars fan, as always. And being a Star Wars fan with me in the Resistance space at the Resistance broadcast, James Bainey, Lacey Gillerin, guys. Welcome back. How was your weekend? Are you excited about Celebration and all this other news we're going to get into? Being a Star Wars fan is pretty damn good right now. What do you say? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Star Wars is crazy. And I love Star Wars. And I'm excited to talk Star Wars. Do you like chili dogs? (laughs) No, but I do have a question. Do you guys ever uh, put... uh, a uh, piece of bread and then all peanut butter and then another piece of bread and then all jelly and then a third piece of bread and eat like a double PB and J. So a jelly club, like a big Mac. No, it's a like jelly a pe- club. A club would, sandwich is three pieces of bread with the filling on either side of the middle piece. Yes. Except for peanut butter is one of them. So I would say it's a PB and J club. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Does club stand <laughs> for anything? I heard it's like an acronym for like it's- chicken, lettuce, no, something it's, and bacon. No, no, I don't think it's so. It's just a type of no. sandwich. Yeah, okay. I, th- I think it turkey it, club. I think BLT it actually club, goes back to club. the club sandwich is like a a golf thing, like the golf club. Yes, and then it was yes. like a yeah. I think it had something to do with that. Oh, okay, interesting. All um, right, sandwich I love, talk. I love so club sandwich. Lacey, what uh, what's your deal when you're not uh, explaining sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I'm really excited for celebration. Yay! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's in mm-hmm. August, which is going to be hot. <clears throat> now it's it's going to be very it's be humid. Hot. Yeah, um, we're going to pay hot. homage to all of the people who deal with all the uh, humidity. I don't know about humidity because it's no, <laughs> it's Cali. I don't. It's a desert. <laughs> did you say homage? Uh, I did say homage. Um, <laughs> so, Lacey, when we're out there, can we say things like? Because you said Cali, could we say Cali Lintra? Would that work for you? No, no. Nope. Don, you're I, sometimes work. you try too hard. Too hard. That's All right, what guys, I'm like, someone's Reaching. laughing, but there's a lot going on here. <laughs> we have to get into, including our poll results, and we have a giveaway winner to announce in a little bit too. So hey. let's just get this thing going right now. No more dad jokes today, folks. It's over. I'm sorry, Len. I got reprimanded. The store. Uh, let's closed. hop into the poll results right now. <laughs> We asked you guys, will you be picking up the new Star Wars video game Jedi Fallen Order when it comes out later this year? I believe November 15th is the date. And I don't know if you guys are lying because it's so ahead of time, but 71% of people who answered this poll said yes, they are buying Jedi Fallen Order. Only 13% said no, and about 16% said they're still undecided. So maybe they need to see more gameplay or or trailers or find out how it's going to go down. Uh, But... I have to say, I was shocked that this many people said they're buying this game. Um, and that's just me because I'm not a big gamer. But James and Lacey, what do you guys think? 71% of people buying Fallen Order. Are you into the game? Are you going to buy the game? And are you surprised about uh, how this poll turned out? So I'm I'm not going to buy the game because I don't, I don't have a system to even play it, uh, let alone buy the system to get it. Uh, I've never played battlefront or any of those games um but i i follow the canon the story uh you know through youtube or whatever but it makes me it makes me wonder Lacey. i'll ask you too after you tell us what you voted for but do you think it would make sense that that someday they'll be like okay we get it we put a lot of work into this and not everybody's going to play this game so what we did is we took all the videos and we put we filled in the gaps that so that it kind of makes sense and then uh we're releasing the full story mode for twenty dollars yeah i think they did that for like halo that. did they where they took a yeah they, they made a halo movie which i'm assuming kind of worked off the video game 
Hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Weird. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope they do that if they don't already. <laughs> Lacey, what'd you vote for? I voted yes. I already pre-ordered it. The deluxe edition for PS4. Now, what does that My mean? body is ready. I don't know. It's just the best. I had to have it. So that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> like, Lacey's so funny because they, like, they could just use the word deluxe or like whatever. And Lacey's like, I'm getting that one. What is yeah. it? I'll buy it. <laughs> Celebration <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Celebration tickets deluxe, nine hundred dollars. <laughs> She's like, yes, yeah, give me the deluxe. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I pre-ordered it. It will be arriving on my house at like the day it comes out via Amazon, and I'm super excited. So um, de- deluxe, I think, comes with like extra, like behind the scenes stuff, mm. extra Art game book, modes. Maybe? I get like character skins. Like they have two skins for the bdo one and different oh wait i know this lightsaber colors yeah i saw that Mm -hmm. and there's also two special missions one of them you can't get normally yeah Yeah. the uh umbara and shoot there's another one which umbara is a crazy looking planet so that would look awesome i bet and i'm so excited the, at at celebration during the panel, they show like a little bit of like a behind the scenes making of the movie. Does it come with yes. that a documentary? Yes. Or no? yes. Oh, that's cool. Okay. It's like a I, full thing with like interviews and behind the scenes stuff. How I love the game that came stuff. together. Interesting. Me so too. What was, what was the differential in price between the? Del- I feel like I'm doing a commercial now. Lacey, what do you get if you buy one? Hey, what's the difference between like the regular and the deluxe? The deluxe was sixty nine ninety nine, and I believe the regular was about fifty bucks. Uh, all right. John is frozen. I am frozen. No, I'm not. All right. Uh, so we did have <laughs> a best comment uh, on this poll, and it was by one of our commanders on our uh, Patreon page. His name is Evan Harris. Harris Evan! Harris M9. Where have you been, Evan? And guess what, Lacey? Evan is also buying the game. He said, yes, I've been waiting for a single player Star Wars adventure that's both challenging and fun. So I think that's pretty cool that uh, Evan was able to uh, admit that to us uh, this far in advance. Now, with this game, though, you can't play like Battlefront. You can't like he he can't play with you online, right? This is a completely different type of animal. You can't play online on on this with people. No, it's a story game. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I wasn't sure. I don't know if it had uh, an option where you can hop. I am going to go play Fallen Order. You want to hop on? So it's not like that. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, the only thing I can think is like if they somehow decide to add something. Campaign modes, like, yeah. Well, like, yeah, like Call of Duty zombies or something that you might be able to like, I don't know. Yeah, the only problem is that then competes something. with Battlefront, which I'm already playing. So they already have my mm-hmm. money oh, that's with a that. good, Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Which um, is super all right. fun if you want to play. Now, um, but yeah. before we move on to the news... Speaking of Fallen Order, we have a giveaway to announce. So yes. I will send it to Lacey Gillerin yes. to announce who yes. the winner is. Yeah, so this week we had a giveaway. It was the Star Wars Celebration Jedi Fallen Order exclusive poster with original art. Um, two of the pins which is one of the, I think it's the second sister, and then there is a Purge Trooper, and then also a month of Xbox Live Gold membership. And the winner is Sarah Cesar at Mrs. Luna Cesar. Congratulations! All right, Sarah! Woo! Yay! So we'll send that out to you, so we'll DM you and get your information. And there were... Back to you, I underestimated this giveaway. I, I thought there was going to be, you know, a couple hundred retweets. It was like s- almost 700 retweets. So, Sarah, you I knew you it was going to be odds. big. Yes. So, uh, Sarah really beat the odds there and uh, is taking that home. And I think that's so cool, especially items like this that you can't, unless you get it from scalpers, that you can't really, you know, hop over somewhere online and buy them. So, uh, very cool. And, uh, and I congrats. hand carried it back to Connecticut, Sarah. So, <laughs> there you go. I touched this post on the plane. <laughs> on the plane. So, yeah, congrats, Sarah. Very cool. All right. Um, and yeah, as Lacey said, we'll uh, DM you and get that out to you. So now it is time to send things over to James Bainey because we do have news to get into as always on the resistance report. James, what's going on, man? 
fights the resistance. So a couple good stories coming out. A couple things to talk about this week. Uh, first story we got here is that I guess I guess the Rise of Skywalker is actually being edited live on set. Um, this this came from uh, the person who was involved, uh, the the main editor. Um, this is uh, Marianne Brandon, who was doing an interview and was asked, you know, about Star Wars and stuff. And uh, when it was brought up, they said, you know, we don't really have a, a good schedule. Uh, we don't have a comparable schedule to when we were doing The Force Awakens. So we're like four months. We have four months less time. So we really had to rush. And I brought it up to JJ. And originally he was like, no. But uh, but I did convince him. And it ended up being a really good thing. So like... I don't know. We could talk a little bit about how this goes down, but I found this news to be quite interesting because I don't know how commonplace this is uh, for this to be happening uh, in right. Hollywood in general. But I, mm-hmm. I never, I never thought this was going on. This seemed rare to me, and uh, especially for something like Star Wars. Um, John, what did you think of? Uh, of uh, the possibility that they're just, you know, trying to get this done as soon as possible. It's interesting because I immediately try to compare it to The Force Awakens because that was also JJ's thing. And they finished principal photography or filming uh, for The Force Awakens 13 months before the movie came out. Whereas on this movie, it was nine months. Uh, So she brings up the time crunch and... I guess pitching the idea, you know, why don't we, why don't we go, uh, you know, old school and rogue on this thing and, and edit as we're shooting. And she introduced the idea that it, it almost made, I believe she said it made the experience feel a little more immersive with the actors and kind of showing them like, this is what this is going to look like. Like, check this out. Um, yeah, but, getting to know the cast and having them be comfortable with me. It was really a great way to understand right. what they were going through. Yeah, so th- mm-hmm. I think that's cool. Um, as as they've said, this seems like a more of a loose type of operation than um, maybe the rigidness of Ryan Johnson's where he had his vision and he kind of stuck to it type of thing. But also, she had to sell JJ on this idea because he he doesn't like doing it things that way. So it was a it was a sales pitch that she had to kind of push across. I don't think it's normal for Star Wars, mainly because I think about George Lucas um, and how meticulous he was with editing after everything was filmed and how one little you know robot in the background, he didn't like how that looked and he would just tear frame by frame, tear these things apart. I can't imagine him ever going through a situation where he's like, yeah, edit my movie as I'm filming it. He would probably lose his mind. So... I think to, it's it's I think it's more common for movies in general, but to Star Wars, it's very foreign as far as I understand it. Even digging back to when Marsha Lucas was editing uh, A New Hope, so uh, it's interesting to me. I'm glad that I haven't noticed people making this a, a problem, like the internet going crazy with this, like meaning it's a bad thing because it's not, it's a practice that they do. So, um, bravo to the internet for not saying this is some kind of calamity issue. Uh, I think that's, that's glad that's a good thing. We didn't have to deal with that and try to explain that in that way. But, um, interesting that she kind of revealed that I love behind the scenes stuff and hearing the making of these movies. So this is right in my alley. Um, I was on board with this type of story. I like this stuff. So that's funny because I was going to ask Lacey if she thought this was a good or bad thing for Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it really matters because they're professionals. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to question anything they're doing because they've been doing this for so long, especially JJ and his team. Um, but didn't Ryan Johnson do edits while the movie was going on? He, he at least did dailies every day where he'd cut together scenes so he could get a better idea of what's going on. So wouldn't that help them? If so, one of the things we've been talking about, I think someone asked a question either last week or the week before where they were like, do you think they're going to be doing reshoots anytime soon? And I don't think they are. This probably could have helped with not doing reshoots because if something didn't look right or didn't work out, they could immediately Mm -hmm. go and shoot it. Yeah. 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 I mean, theoretically, you're right. Like if they're, if they have five days at a location, you know, and they maybe plan four days of shooting just because that fifth or day. Or two days of shooting, one off day to edit everything, and then two to more days of shooting. 
Yeah, or some something along yeah. those lines, because some sort of structure to be able to see like what they're getting. But this th- this type of thing to me, like I definitely know this is not the case. Like people shoot their their movie and then afterwards they go and edit it, and it right, just right. it makes me think like why why aren't they doing this? Uh, because this to me does absolutely seem they're like, you know what? You know what? Now that I'm looking at this, it's weird. We keep cutting back. There needs to be like a third frame in here somewhere. We need a different angle. This isn't working. Um, And I was going to say, do we know if this was filmed on film? Did JJ film this on film or was it digital? Yeah. I was just about to ask that. Was it digital or film? Uh, I think it is I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's film because I, I even watched a video the other day that says even major movies now die days except for, and then they specifically called out star Wars. So do but, they need I mean, to, that could change, but were they resorted to only doing editing? I, I you know, I wish I, I, we had someone here who's more involved with film production, but um, like at Pinewood. So like when they were in, at Wadi rum, are they, do they have the capabilities to be editing film? Uh, in the in trailers or whatever setups they had, or did they have to be at a major place like Pinewood to do that? You know what I mean? They would ship the stuff out, probably. I would sh- they'd probably ship the film out like that day. Mm. Like someone would get on a plane and fly. Because he shot episode seven in 35 millimeter film. So I'm assuming he also did that for nine. Yeah, I would think he would stick to his his, his style and his, his and his cameras format. were very film looking cameras. They didn't look like digital cameras. Yeah. And he had the same, um, director of photography, uh, Dan Mendel, right. Was his name. Um, so you would think that they're doing that. I, I believe they showed the Panavision film cameras. So I think you're right. I think that's what they did. Um, I, I this is interesting to me. I want to look into this more hmm, because yeah. filming on the spot or, or whatever, uh, just it, to me, I think of them being like, they just filmed and now let's take a look at it and let's cut it up as we're, you know, wrapping for the day sort of thing. But it's probably more layers to it than that. So, but it's an interesting story. And um, like I said, I'm glad it didn't turn into anything that people started freaking out about. <laughs> what else I think yeah. is crazy is the whole uh, JJ said no. You know, I think, I think that part of it is wild too. She's like, look, we don't, we don't have a lot of time, so we need to be doing this here. And there's so many benefits and for JJ to go, "Mm, no, like that doesn't make sense. And she had to fight for it and she ended up getting I think that's a control thing. Imagine all the variables that go into having that stuff done while it's happening. Whereas if you wait till the end, you know exactly where all that film is. You know exactly when all that stuff's getting shipped at the same time. Like, imagine if one of those scenes gets out or it's like a big scene that gets out. I can but imagine. I don't know. I know you were saying that. they were like shipping it out, but like a lot of the stuff she was saying was that she was there on set editing because then right, right, she, right. If, she, if she needed to... Um, let me think of the way it was. If I needed a they shot must have had or if it at JJ the hotel. decided we wanted another shot, we would set up a corner and green screen and shoot or something. She also mentioned something about uh, if, if there was like someone um, who she had a question, you know, like she's like, is this supposed to be like this or like this? Then the person's just right there to ask. They so, probably had a remote set up somewhere like in a hotel or in a different, like a different office is, space. And so they'd shoot and then run the film to her somewhere. I kind of, I don't know why, but I kind of like that because it just seems so old school and, uh, just like backyard filmmaking almost in a way like, uh, yeah. like, you know, JJ is known for being a, a Spielberg fanboy in the history of Spielberg making old super eight films and that kind of thing. So I think it's almost funny that JJ was rejecting the idea at first. It almost sounds like something he'd be like, yeah, that sounds like something Steven would do, you know, but, uh, it also makes you think if she sat on set and watched the scenes as they played out. So she had a better idea. Whereas most editors just get the stuff after it's done and just use their technique yeah. and to, to get which, the feeling how they want to approach it, which yeah. I wasn't trying yeah. to be negative, but I, what I was saying was that I, I think doing it this way can change the dynamic of, of how, like if, if the force awakens is good and the last Jedi is good and they didn't do it this way, then how does this way change the vibe on the Mm -hmm. set of like, it almost, it, 
it doesn't seem like there can be a downside. So why don't other movies do it this way? JJ, the, it can't, there can't be a downside. So why did JJ say, no, I don't want to do it that way. You know, there was like right. all these kind of questions in there. So I'm like, okay, but they're doing it this way f- because they're trying to like double time yes. and like crunch yeah. time. And I'm like, okay, so does this mean they're kind of, instead of taking a task and then taking a separate task when the first one's done, they're like multitasking. And I'm like, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it, it seems good. Like it seems like a hundred percent good. They, was production not on time? I thought it was done early. It was on time. Uh, yeah, or is it because of the whole Colin thing that it got pushed back production wise? I think, well, I think it just ar- started late. It, it, correct mm. me if I'm wrong, but the original original release date of episode nine was supposed to be May of this year, like when they first announced this trilogy. Yeah, yeah, remember. you might be right, but I know when the Colin Trevorrow stuff happened, it was they went to JJ and they said, "Look, you, we want you to do this film, but you, if you start right here, you've only got so much time to finish this movie." He was talking about that at right. Celebration, mm-hmm. and so he's right. like, "Oh my gosh, I'm basically starting from scratch." I mean, yeah, there's this and this and this, but I mean, basically, I have nothing, and I have right. like two years to complete this film. Right. So I think and they're Ron just Howard's like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> I'll do that thing Hold in two beer, months. JJ. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out Ron Howard was shooting is shooting nine and solo two and another <laughs> right. uh, and the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> He's Jack also bringing three. back Clone Wars. Apollo well, 13 to think, what, two. No, what's the one that he does? That's uh, it's like the Da Vinci stuff, but they're called like D- Dan Brown novel. He's shooting the, the Dan next Brown Dan novel. Brown. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I call those the All creepy right, guys. Tom Hanks hair movies. <laughs> his hair does change a lot in those movies they're like it's like weird it's creepy I think it's so weird that they're not sequels <laughs> they're not no oh. the character Tom Hanks character is the same character but in every movie it's he's a- like a normal person and then this event happens and it's just like I like the character so much that I wrote a one time major event for him multiple times Wow. It's like house episodes so, where he thinks it's leukemia, then argues with a bunch of people, and then it ends up to be leukemia. Oh, <laughs> spoiler alert um, for yeah. every house episode. Yeah, that's literally I mean, what I, it is every episode. I'm spoiler alert. I'm getting ready to start season one, episode one. Never. Uh, <laughs> all right. James, I just want to say this one thing about that. So, you know, Star Wars movies always, you know, I think it's, I don't want to say it's overrated like to change how you make these things. But because like Star Wars movies went through all different types of changes. You have A New Hope, which, um, you know, they they barely got it done. And George Lucas like almost had a heart attack. And Marshall Lucas did the editing. Then you go to Empire Strikes Back. Lee Brackett wrote the first draft. Uh, Larry Kazan took over and rewrote the movie. And, and when they had that issue, they brought in a new director with Irvin Kershner who had a different style of directing. Then you got Return of the Jedi and they had issues with that director, Mark Wend, and, and Lucas took over and they had a different uh, writer brought in showing there. showing off now. No, my point is, like, <laughs> people are like, oh man, how are they going to change the editing style? Oh my God, this movie's going to be so different. It's like, you're going to watch, like, unless you're the greatest film expert of all time, uh, you're not going to notice th- that they edited this movie there or here or then or there. So uh, I just think it's a cool nugget that they released for for fans to kind of digest and understand how they made this thing. And uh, I, I just, I love that stuff. I really do. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's talk about our next story though, because uh, it involves not the movies, but television and we're talking Cassie and Andor series for Disney Plus. We actually got a uh, word today or last week that uh, the Game of Thrones concept artist Kieran Belshaw is actually working on the Cassie and Andor series. Uh, this came from something on Instagram where they were like, "Hey, this is really cool. I'm working on some projects. What do you guys think?" And then they put like a bunch of like Rogue One art and stuff in the photo and uh they were trying to be sneaky but they quickly answered the question and asked <laughs> like hey are you working on cassie and andor yeah yeah i'm working on cassie and andor. so <laughs> um not a lot to really say here other than uh you know if you want to go check out the art you can check it out and you can form your opinion from there Lacey, have you have you seen the art uh, i know you're a huge game of thrones fan you've seen every episode um but 
no, I, I'm the same way. I haven't seen anything. But I know the look, obviously, right? Are you with me? Yeah, we yeah. We kind of have an idea of the look. Um, I'm down I mean, with I this. Love uh, pro- I want to hear yeah, what I you l- say. Yeah, I love production artwork. I buy all the, like, making of books. They're, like, my favorite things. So... <laughs> I'm all for it. And that's really funny that he just like casually was like, oh, doing this. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, uh, oh, word. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I-, I think people automatically, unfortunately, were like, oh, Game of Thrones. Come on. But you can't downplay the scale and in, 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 like grandeur of Game of Thrones. And I feel like they're just going to bring that same gritty, brutal, underworld type look of it to this. And I'm really excited about it, but I haven't watched Game of Thrones, so sorry. Such a shame. <laughs> it triggered nothing sorry, triggers John. me more than that right now that you guys haven't watched that, but anyway. Or Indiana Jones? That's tough. That's really tough. Which one tr- triggers you more? I think I'm more triggered that you walk around with Lucasfilm sweatshirts, but you haven't watched half of their <laughs> best movies. That's what triggers me. I have three of them. Go ahead. James, do you have a setup question for me or am I just running with this one? (laughs) No, I figured you could just go with it because you got a lot to go on the Game of Thrones thing. And then I I assumed because even what Lacey was saying right there is that you can't knock Game of Thrones. You've been on record before saying like, it just bothers me that, that these, the whole show is getting blamed because of these two guys, but there's so many people that work on this show. Yeah. Like they're so give epic. Credit where the credit episodes is. are so epic. Yeah. Like, Hey, they got the sound designer from this show and you're like, that show had a bad ending. It's like, well, good. I didn't have anything to do with that. Did you like <laughs> right. the sound? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you, like, <laughs> did you like this noise I made in my garage? I don't what. Well, James, yeah. it was like, you, it was like you saying about uh, the last Jedi and you're like, but you like John Williams, right? On that. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah I do. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, the costumes were good, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah. 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 Uh, really yeah. So like fur. <laughs> The concept, yeah, the concept art, um, like Game of Thrones, there was one shot in the finale where it shows uh, like the dragon coming behind uh, Amelia Clark's yeah. character. And everyone, even who hated that episode, lost their mind at that shot. And you see this guy's concepts for that and all this other stuff. And you're talking about trying to create a world that looks medieval, but also fantastical. And all of his images that he creates are just unreal. I didn't really look through them until I saw that he's working on uh, casting Andor. And I have to give thanks to uh, Hallie, who's a contributor to Star Wars News, that she tipped me off on this because she is a really big Game of Thrones fan. And she follows everyone involved with the production, including um, uh, Kieran Belshaw. So she's like, hey, check this out. Because she's the one who actually asked him, wait, does this confirm that you're working on casting Andor? And he's like, uh, yep. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't realize it was her that actually asked. That's yeah, cool. it was Hallie. Yeah, so thank you, Hallie, for that. Um, so uh, I, I am excited about this because I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan and I've been wishy-washy on the Cassian thing because all I know is that it's going to be a spy type of thing. So it's not going to be the, the uh, same look as um, a Game of Thrones, but maybe the spectacle will be there. Uh, so we'll get a spy thing, but also get an enriched, deep, kind of really get into it environment. And that makes me excited, especially for a spy type of thing where you may have to have him like, you know, distant from people, kind of like in uh, Rogue One where they're on Edu and they're looking through sniper rifles or whatever the situation is. So I like that. That makes a lot of sense. And also, to me, you have a lot of talent that went into making Game of Thrones, which might be the, the biggest and most successful TV series on that spectacle of all time. And Disney's probably like, we're starting TV shows for Star Wars. What better pool to grab talent from than this series? They already got the two head hon- the two head honchos to bring them in to make these movies. Oh, you guys love that concept artist? Bring him in. Let's interview him. Then you're going to hear more. You're going to hear about costume designers. You're going to hear about a lot of things uh, from this show. I think coming in. I, I think. This is just the tip of the iceberg from people who work on Game of Thrones. They're going to make their way over to Star Wars, in my opinion. And to me, it's a no-brainer. Whether you hated the series finale one hour out of 85 hours of content or not. (laughs) So because of all the artwork for Rogue One, I've been thinking about this. And it's kind of an off-subject question. But 
uh, the 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 new movies uh, like Force Awakens was kind of like a red and blue aesthetic, and Last Jedi was obviously red, like strong red. Um, Solo was kind of like an orange and yellow, and then my favorite, um, just because it's like one of my favorite colors in general. But like Rogue One was like that deep uh, teal, kind of a greeny um, computer screen kind of color. Um, but do you guys think that they'll embrace uh, other colors? Like, do you think uh, do you think that uh, episode nine will be red and blue again, or do you think they'll go with like a, another color or like the Benioff and Y stuff? Do you think it'll be like purples like Royal royalty or something? I don't know. It's just kind of random. Lacey, this sounds like more I, your, your department here. I feel like Cassie and Andor is going to be more like, like darker earth tones because you have to think of like the dirty places he's going to go to get stuff done. And I can't see that mm. being like a purple tone. I could see it being like greenish brown. Yeah. Well, see, I, th- I think for the Cassie and Andrew show, they'll stick with the Rogue One aesthetic and they'll make his show right. that greeny, that tealy but, color. But, I mean, we've already seen from the trailer of The Rise of Skywalker that it's it's blue and red. The planet Kylo's on is red. Death Star planet's that bluish tone. The ship mm-hmm. on the snow mm-hmm. planet is mm-hmm. that bluish tone. I think back. we're sticking yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. ca- yeah, the Cassian kind of thing... If it's a spy thriller type of thing, do you like? I'm not a big James Bond fan. I know um, Lacey Matt is right. Your husband. Is oh he yeah, he's biggest biggest Bond fan. Do they have yep. one set of like this is James Bond's look? This is how we make a James Bond movie, or is it a movie by movie basis? Because maybe they're gonna try to bite off that style if it's that same genre, you know. I think it's a movie by movie basis. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I was, I, yeah, I was also. Yeah, because the newer ones are darker than the older ones. Like the Pierce Brosnan ones aren't as dark as oh, the. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always want to say, uh, is it Daniel Craig? Yes. Yes. Daniel Craig. The stormtrooper yes. who uh, dropped his weapon. <laughs> yes. Rebel scum. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, too, the, uh, the Mandalorian's kind of that like silvery, earthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Kind of color too. Yeah. Now I don't know how that translates to concept art versus you know cinematography and 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 tone uh, choices. But one last thing I want to say about this is like you know you have like we're talking about moving on from John Williams with new music, right? And now we're talking about really moving on beyond um, Ralph McQuarrie's like legendary concept art that they're still using today in the sequel trilogy in a lot of areas. So Star Wars, each little by little, they're moving on from all these like legendary people. And it's a, it's a good thing for Star Wars because then this guy may become the next Ralph McQuarrie for all we know, you know, so you need to, I wonder if Doug Chang's going to play into this at all. Because he's it, the one that's kind of does a lot of the, yeah. Because he did a, he did most of Rogue One, mm-hmm. so I wonder if yeah. he's going to be working with this person to do uh, Cassie and Andor because he came up I, with the concepts of I, Rogue One. Yeah, I can't possibly imagine that he wouldn't be somehow involved. He's unreal. Even, even on a light, how do you yeah. how do you match that creativity of being like, oh, I need to come up with a bar scene with seven different aliens? Ah, yes. Let me pull this from my brain. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point. Unless they're just trying to like separate movie and they are really trying to nail down some kind of TV division of Star Wars Maybe. and like did this you guy watch his handles that and this guy handles that did you watch just, his panel at this year's celebration Doug Chang yeah the Doug Chang panel no I didn't yeah it was good what yeah. was his panel Very what was good. it called because I, I saw him at uh, a panel he was I don't remember what it was called but I remember it was that definitely it was, concept art yeah, it was about the the concept of art and design mm-hmm. and and why they made the choices. Actually, I believe it was uh the like the art of Phantom Menace specifically. Like when I mm-hmm. was going into this, this is the mm-hmm. project that I had on my plate. Okay. But I know um, Doug Chang does a lot of the art for all the books, but I remember Rogue One specifically like he did a lot of the art for Rogue One. Yeah. Well, speaking of celebration, um Santa Bra- Celebration Anaheim guys a date now. Uh, For our third and final story, I know we kind of talked a little bit about it, but August 27th through the 30th in the year 2020 is when we are going to be celebrating Star Wars. Um, And uh, the tickets uh, go on sale, I think, like sometime early next year, right? No, this Friday. (laughs) 
what? <laughs> like four days I from just now. just <laughs> got back. Holy oh. cow. Oh yeah. my gosh. All right, tickets go on sale this Friday. Um, but yeah, we just want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the celebration experience yet to come speculate a little bit, talk about our reactions and how they're handling all this stuff. So, um, Lacey, I'm going to start with you just cause you are, you are our celebration guru. Uh, I hate just that term. you've been to it one year. <laughs> Wait, um, you hate the term guru? I do. <laughs> oh yeah. Guru <laughs> is actually a Dragon Ball <laughs> character, which is getting a lot of love. <laughs> in the chats and on Twitter when I make actual Dragon Ball references. Is that the guy that uh, steals bodies? No, that's Ginyu. Oh, Ginyu. Guru is the eldest Namekian and he unlocks the power of Gohan and uh, actually kind of gives it to Dende too, but he passes Does on that say no one cares? Guardian. Lacey Guru. Call Lacey Guru. Just a little show oh, notes. No, That's Siri. Future. Siri, No. I said, call Lacey Guru. All right. um, Yeah, Lacey, talk about a celebration. Yeah, so they announced celebration in Anaheim in in August next year. Um, I'm really excited. I've been hearing some rumblings of a Galaxy's Edge event that's going to be happening. So we'll hopefully hear more about that. But um, that's exciting. I'm pumped that's in August because I, I like the idea of it being later in the summer. And it gives me more time to save up money to spend money. (laughs) <laughs> um other than that it's gonna be very interesting because it won't be a saga year there's no movies coming out so i'm interested to see what they're gonna be talking about which obviously will be mostly the tv tv, but TV. tickets range from i don't know what the day price is because i'm looking at multi-day but multi-day four-day ticket is 195 dollars. if you're gonna do jedi master it's 900 dollars, which is up about 48 dollars from i think you said it wrong it's ticket deluxe <laughs> The deluxe edition. Jedi Master Deluxe is up $52. No, $48 from $852, which was the last one. Lacey, I think someone said the single days are like 70 bucks. Does that sound right? That does sound right. Yeah. Then why? I mean, it just makes sense to get the... Well, it depends where you're coming from. Are you local? I was surprised I knew a lot of people that went for one day. I had a friend who came all the way from where I live, so it's like five-hour drive, and they were just there Sunday. Yeah, no. I'm super pumped that it's back in Anaheim. It's a great location. The venue's great. The arena holds like 5,000 people, and it's a basketball arena, so there's like high upper tiers. Not as much as... um, the wind trust, but it's still really cool. That's where TFA was. So it's kind of nice that we're back there again and the hotels are right there. And then it's a 10 minute walk to Disneyland, which is really nice. That is a good point that you bring up about like what, I mean, we're going to get into this more on Thursday. We're going to really dive probably, into probably TV. I the discussion, assume, but, but yeah, yeah more TV. Can... I wonder if it'll be two years away from the Benioff and Weiss movie. If they'll have a panel, just maybe even introducing what it is. Yeah. I mean, a lot can change in a year as we know in star Wars. So they might even have a movie announced by then. Anyway, that change.org thing may get those guys fired by that. Yeah. (laughs) Stay tuned till Thursday's episode. (laughs) So you can hear us talk and really get into the speculation of what we think celebration Anaheim is going to be tinfoil hats on. How do you say that, John? Tin Don't foils. say it like that again. That was weird. Tins, Your foils, face was weird. hats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, John, let's so. head into the scoundrels <laughs> rundown. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So, yeah, Thursday, the reason why we cut that short is Thursday, we're going to really have our main discussion on celebration. Um, It'll be the day before the tickets and hotels go on sale. So we're going to just pummel Lacey with questions about her knowledge of the history of celebration and also give you kind of a survival guide on how to get what you need to get on Friday and um, how to move forward in your planning for celebration. So... And of course, like we said, we'll speculate on what we think we're going to see. So Thursday is going to be our big time celebration discussion. But now it is time to count it down from five because we're going to run it down. And I hope you've all had your coffee and you're not snoozing because it's time for the rundown in five, four, three, two, one. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Vader Dark Visions comes to an end. That is the comic run that has not been getting a lot of grace from fans. Unfortunately, it's been very controversial. And our own Kyle Larson at Star Wars Newsnet has reviewed this final issue and said it stinks. <laughs> He gave it a 4 yeah. out of 10 and said it's oh. time for Vader to probably go away for a little while. He said this issue, this run of Dark Vision did not feel like Star Wars at all. It was mainly That's about... That's not like Kyle to give a negative review. It was he's, He gives honest reviews. He gives fair and honest reviews. And he said it didn't feel like Star Wars. It was more about death and destruction. Didn't feel like Vader. And it, um, it uh, wasn't that great of a run. And he said it was happy for it to come to an end, actually. So um, go to Star Wars News newsnet.com to check out Kyle's review on Dark Visions, whether you agree or not, whether you liked it. It's a spoiler review, too, in case you haven't had a chance to read it or I'm not going to have a chance to pick up the book. Uh, you can at least get up to date in your latest canon Darth Vader stuff, but I think there's a good chance that Darth Vader is going to go bye-bye for a little while because he's been really oversaturated in the comics, in my opinion, of late. Um, next, guys, uh, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, the nine-movie encompassing game, is heading our way next year in 2020 so maybe they'll do something about that at celebration too uh although it may come out in the first half of the year um early reveals showed us the character looks as well as the fact that it will have an open world format which is new for the lego star wars games allowing players to kind of explore a bit and bop around a bit more than they uh previously were allowed to in the pre in the uh, prior lego star wars games. so actually enjoy those games they're kind of fun and light and um I should play them with my nephews and I didn't die immediately. So good for me, I guess. Um, that's more of my speed than like your battlefronts and stuff like that. But uh, guys, that's it. A quick rundown for you. We got, uh, like I said, the review. Go to StarWarsNewsNet.com. Check out all of our comic and book reviews always from our great review team, uh, Yelena, Jordan, and Kyle. And uh, Lego Star Wars. Open world. Sounds fun to me. Um, but that is it. So now we'll send it over to Lacey to hop into your questions this week in hashtag AskTheResistance. So Chewy. Get us out of here. All right, guys, it's time for Ask the Resistance. You have Star Wars questions. Hopefully you have some pretty good Star Wars answers. I've been wondering, what are midi-chlorians? We're starting off with Dekind of Akins at Dekind of Akins. Oh, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark, <laughs> who is an amazing hey, Kylo cosplayer I learned in the past week. Uh, you should share your photos, Mark. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. If you he like see... took photos on a volcano. Yeah, if you want to see <laughs> Kylo Ren on vacation in Hawaii, then check out Mark's cosplay. On a volcano. Right. Anyway, Jeez. he asks, what are your early predictions on panels and guest stars at Swaka, that's Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2020, and what about Galaxy's Edge events? Hashtag Ask the Resistance. I'll take this one first, ladies first. So... We talked a little bit about this. We're going to talk more about it on Thursday, but uh, early predictions on panels and guests. You're probably going to get a Mandalorian panel, a Resistance panel. I would assume some type of Clone Wars saved panel. Um, hopefully a Cassian Andor panel, maybe a Solo 2 panel. Um, and I think a Kenobi panel, hopefully this time. Ooh. And we won't get pied. Hmm. Um, guest stars... You'll probably see the ones that you always see. Um, Alan Tudyk, Jonas. <laughs> um, I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying like people that usually do the con circuit are going to be there. Uh, Anthony Daniels. Yeah. Um, Mark Hamill's a tough cookie to get now. He only does like two events a year Ooh, and he has Mark. a lot of demands like a private jet. So very worried about Mark. Um, but yeah, Galaxy's Edge events. I have been hearing rumors that they're looking to do a Galaxy's Edge event um, based on what they did at Disney for 2017. They did it on a Friday night in Hollywood Studios. I would assume that's about the night they're probably going to do it for uh, Disneyland because who wants to give up the Saturday night of Galaxy's Edge on a weekend? Um, but yeah, those are really fun because it's only certain people get into that part of the park. Um, so the ride lines are super small or like not long. Which is nice, but at the same time, I don't know how it's going to go with all the Star Wars fans that want to go into that little park. I haven't been to it yet, so I guess we'll see. Um, I think yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah, hopefully. Next is 777MJ23 at Juju Jr. And he asks, 
Could the guy from the cover of the Force Collector book be a young Ben Solo? Exhibit one, his general resemblance. Exhibit two, the style of his sleeves. James, our book guy. What do you think? No. Um, number one, I I thought, and I I forgot to, to pull it up before we started recording the episode, so I was trying to do it there. I thought that the description of the book immediate it already like debunks that um but what i think it kind of debunked was it said that it takes place right before the force awakens um so i was like well then it can't be a young ben solo to that because he's already 23 yeah it just yeah it doesn't it doesn't seem right like even if you were to say okay so it's not right before it's just before the force awakens then that technically could be anything and i and don't he know had I turned just, years I really before don't, that. yeah exactly it was like six years before or something so i i really just don't think that's what they're going for but i might even go as far as to say that I think there might have been an author or a story group member or something that confirmed no, it's a new character, it's com- completely new. So, yeah. um I would not I would not bet on that or hold that to be um uh Ben Solo, but I do like how you said the style of his sleeves. <laughs> because <laughs> he got that right. sleeve look we that are look. we are in a true era of star wars fandom where we really inherently feel a need to to connect everybody to everybody everything yeah absolutely next is gary vegas at the donkey drip interesting um he asks based on certain leaks <laughs> that's the and- best condiment at, at uh the dong hot dog shop <laughs> oh, jimmy, jimmy dong's dog chili dogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you want that with extra donkey drip <laughs> Ew. nobody that's not a patron will understand that joke um based on certain really? leaks and Daniel Anthony Daniels claiming 3PO has a much larger role in the rise of Skywalker. Do you think it's possible the Knights of Ren are pursuing 3PO considering he's the OG Vader artifact? John, what do you think? No, I I don't um and I don't, I think I really think this 3PO role thing is being blown out of proportion. Um one, I think Anthony Daniels speaks very uh, hyperbolically uh, and uh, exaggeratively, and and just just he, it's just how he is. Because I'm just thinking about his tweets where he's like, "Incoming over." Oh, that was the worst. Here yeah. At house. Yeah. yeah, it's like you know when Anthony <laughs> Daniels, that type of guy, where he's just, I mean, pretty much he's just C3PO. That's his. That's what he is. When it's not Star Wars time, he's just. Tony Daniels in England going to the grocery store. So when it's on and it's time, he's, he <laughs> takes full advantage of, of being that celebrity. So he gets the opportunity to say, oh, with 3PO, I was there on the last day of the set, and 3PO is here to like really have a big role, and this, blah, blah, blah. And then you see the poster, and maybe he's holding something or whatever. But uh, to now think that maybe the Knights of Ren are after 3PO, and he's some sort of MacGuffin because Anakin built him when he was eight, like... There's no way. There's no chance. Um, I think, again, you know, the whole thing, we're finishing nine movies. We're not just finishing the the sequel trilogy. I think we're overplaying that very much. I, I do not think we're doing some massive connectivity to the Phantom Menace here. I really don't. Um, Could you really imagine like that C-3PO idea. is like the main thing of this saga? Like something <laughs> yeah. opens up out of his chest and the whole time there was a kyber, kyber crystal in his chest that like <laughs> saves the whole galaxy. Like, uh, he's like, uh, no. No, I never knew that like, was in there. My chest felt tight Poe for 40 Finn. years. <laughs> he's behind Poe and Finn and like the Knights of Ren are like, that droid belongs to me yeah. <laughs> like, and he's like <laughs> it's just, yeah <laughs> yeah um that's so good oh geez we're doomed um no Book so ends. i i, I get, ends. uh gary i really don't think um that that's going to be the case I, I it'd be nice to see a little more 3po as i said uh with r2 but um i don't think it's going to be some kind of character mcguffin type of situation so I'm, I'm saying no on that one nice and last but not least is pilot number four at Odal Adam. There he is. And he asks, 
When they inevitably do the ultimate nine movie box set for the Skywalker saga, what kind of additional content would you want to see with that and any ideas for special packaging or exclusives that could go with it? And this can, we can all answer this one. John, what do you think? We'll start with you. Well, I anything that has to do with making of these movies. So documentary the hell out of it, um, even more so than commentaries. I love documentaries showing the making of Star Wars movies. I can't get enough of them. I can watch them all the time. So as much of that as possible. And then packaging wise, that's tough. Um, Because there's not maybe like that chest that Obi-Wan kept uh, Anakin's lightsaber in. It looks like kind of old and banged up. But when you open it, uh, all the discs come up, um, that sort of thing. So you need something in this day and age to sell a tangible physical product to people. So they need to make it good uh, because people can just buy the digital versions, of course. So how about that? How about Obi-Wan's little chest from A New Hope where he kept Anakin's uh, lightsaber in? And then maybe there's a spring-loaded thing where it comes up and uh, shows you all the discs. And I don't know, you could it lights up, something like that. (laughs) James, what do you think? What are you laughing at? I'm. Not, I, I always know. laugh. That's my thing. Jeez. Um, Great idea. Yeah, I. I don't really have a. I, I've <laughs> talked a lot about this. That like when it comes to like the DVDs and stuff, I'm like, oh man, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I might. Oh yeah, not James even doesn't buy the DVDs. <laughs> yeah, I. I do, and I was actually happy with them. Happy that I did recently when we had the tornadoes and stuff because we didn't have internet and all that. So I did have the movies available. I told you that a long time ago, dude. What? I was like, James, one day what happens if there's like an apocalypse and you can't use your digital version? You you have the physical version. You're like, when would that yeah. ever happen? I, I know that. <laughs> and I still stand to that because, yeah, there was a couple days where the power was out or whatever, but it's like, that's it not was like the a reason week, to buy, a, to go backwards on your technology for like a scenario. Um, but you get the digital with the Blu-ray, so. Yeah, but you pay more for it. Like two bucks. It's, so like, anyway. it's like a Jimmy Dong Chili it's Dog, not dude. It's two bucks. It's 10 bucks extra. <laughs> it's the 30% more. Anyway. Get, getting to, down to it. All right. Um, for packaging, uh, I don't know. The only thing that I thought of was, th- I think the the one thing that people really remember was those, was the, the one with like um, uh, Vader and like a stormtrooper and then like Yoda on the covers. Like mm-hmm. that's what people think of when they think of like the original VHS trilogy. And I was like, oh, it'd kind of be cool if they did like a variant of like a a new version of that. And then you put like Obi-Wan Padme and Anakin on the originals. And then you brought back the original trilogy ones. And then you did like a new one with like uh, a Ben and a stormtrooper and DJ. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Everybody, everybody got mad with the stormtrooper one on the, on, uh, Empire Strikes oh, yeah. Back. So I thought yeah. I'd throw in a couple mm. like that was randoms. a weird choice for sure. Mm. Yeah, but uh, but no, maybe some some sort of throwback, uh, a homage to that. <laughs> well, I buy all these movies, so uh, I will buy whatever it is. But that being said, I think it would be cool if they had some type of. Um, packaging like they did for the blu-ray edition that came out recently um and by recently i mean like in the past like five six years it was with Mm -hmm. anakin on the cover of tatooine and then you open it up and there's like a hole on the inside there's like a whole mural of all the characters so it'd be cool if they did something like that especially with the beautiful mural they had at celebration where they have it already Mm. done i could see them printing that on the inside um what i'd want to see i think yeah any type of documentary like uh, director in the Jedi was just so awesome. good. It was so, so good. Yeah. Like I cried. It was so good. Um, something like that would be cool, especially if they had a documentary that was the whole series. Like even if it was three, four hours long, I'd watch it. Yep. Like if it was like a mini series type thing. Same here. Um, and then, uh, I'm not a huge fan of commentaries. I watch them all the time. I'd prefer like a behind the scenes, but I would love a commentary that had the director and like a couple of the actors from every set of three. So like maybe for the prequels, they had like, you know, George Lucas with Ewan McGregor and Natalie Portman and Hayden Christensen. And like that was the people that did all the commentary. And then for the originals, they had like 
uh, Mark and Harrison and George and someone else. I'm trying to think like Anthony Daniels for those ones. And then for the sequel, they had like Adam, Daisy, John Boyega and JJ. No, I Ryan. got I got you one better, Lacey. Everybody you just mentioned, right? But yes. then you switch them up. So you get um, you get Mark and Harrison and all them to do commentaries on the prequel movies. No, but I want to see Adam talk about himself because he doesn't watch the movies. Okay. I don't know about that. But you get no, he you get, doesn't. Oh, those he guys doesn't watch the, do the prequels. You get the the sequel trilogy characters, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega. You get them to do the original trilogy because they're like, that's the oldest, furthest from them. And then you get um, uh, Hayden and and Natalie and all them to do the sequel movies. Spo- yeah, but the point of comment. Natalie Portman's not doing any of that. I know, but we're talking about <laughs> she in, came a, back in a perfect for, dream. She came oh, back know, for Marvel. I know. I know. In a perfect dream world, though, that would be what I would want. And the idea of having the actors that are in the movie do the commentary so they could tell you behind the scenes moments from sure. the scenes that they shot. Yeah. So if you switch boo. them around, they're not. No, that's not boo. You can't. That's boo. I don't care. What? You don't even buy this stuff. So why do you even care? <laughs> because I don't care. I want to hear. I want to hear Harrison Ford talk about the prequels. I'll buy why? that. Why? He wasn't there for them. I'd buy that for a dollar. Oh, my God. That's a yeah, well, dollar. Adam, thank you so much for your question. Lacey, can I say James something? James is terribly wrong. Can sure. I say something? I'm yep. going to buy you your set of this as mm-hmm. a gift for just everything mm-hmm. you've done for the podcast and all that. And then when you open it, it's going to be all four Indiana Jones movies inside the box. You're going to have to watch them <laughs> Why all. Why are you telling me? In a row. So you would really buy the packaging just to switch out and then would buy the additional Indiana Jones movies to switch out? Uh, I got to think about it. I own the Indiana Jones movies. You do? Yes. And you haven't watched them? them? Guys, thank you so much for your questions. (laughs) If you want to be on the show, follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N and send your Star Wars questions our way with hashtag Ask the Resistance. Back to you, John. Man. All right. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for uh, listening and watching, being a part of the resistance. <laughs> Make sure you do subscribe to us. Um, again, as always, we do two episodes every week, release on Monday and Thursdays. So you can find us and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. SoundCloud, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. Uh, make sure you comment on our videos, like our videos, share our videos. A lot of people don't know what Star Wars podcasts are, that they even exist. Even people who listen adamantly to our podcast have friends who are like, I had no idea that Star Wars podcasts exist. Spread the word. That's the way we grow, and we really appreciate it. We've been noticing a lot of new people joining the Resistance, so welcome, and thanks for being a part of it. If you want to support the Resistance broadcast, you can go to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Starting at $2 a month, you can support us, and of course, that's all a bunch of exclusive content that we post on there every day. We have five different tiers with different tiers of rewards, so go over to the site, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast, check it out, and if you like what you see hop on board. Um, I do want to say a special thanks to our Patreon generals. And of course, as always, that is Carmelo, who's moving to Spain. Safe travels, buddy. I'm not sure when that is, but don't worry. Your Subaru is going to be okay. Brian Shalito, Don Boring, <laughs> who made us an awesome poster of the three of us in our own little yes, like Star did. Wars movie. Uh, we're going to talk about Am that Am I more. the bad guy, Don? That's all I want to know. I think he said Am James the bad is the guy? bad guy, but... <gasps> And I'm like the, je- or no, yeah, I forget, but um, it's really cool. Uh, it's on our Twitter account at RBATSWNN. So thank you, Don, for that. Um, Andrew Staley, Len Brown, Neil Lowry, and Jeremy Myers, and of course, Val Trichkoff. Thank you, generals, for all of your support through and through on our Patreon page. We really appreciate that. And speaking of Val Trichkoff, guys, make sure you go to StarWarsNewsNet.com. That is our website for all of your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more every day. Uh, That's the place to go, especially as news heats up as we get closer and closer to this fall where Star Wars content is just going to explode everywhere. Um, So that is it for that. And now for us, guys, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing at StarWarsNewsNet.com. And uh, James Bainey, when you're not at Jimmy Dong's Chili Dog food truck, where can people find you? Oh, with that donkey (laughs) drip? Oh, yeah, the donkey drip. (laughs) <laughs> no. uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Meyer Trunks and I have a cup holder 
Or not a cup holder. What do they call that? They call it a coaster, coaster, James. And that is a stormtrooper. Nice. Does it always? It. Does That's it always? Got. Does it always miss your cup? Always. Lacey, how about you? <laughs> People can find me on Twitter at Lacey Gillerin, where I talk about Star Wars and stiff and stuff. And speaking of stuff, we are going to talk a lot about Star Wars Celebration 2020 on Thursday, and we're talking about. Tips for what to do Friday when you're trying to buy stuff, whether that be tickets and hotels. We're talking. What? Oh, she's got a sign. So if you're watching on YouTube, see, Lacey's literally holding up a hashtag, Star Wars Celebration Anaheim. So we're going to have fun with that, I guess. I might have taken that. In the future. Um, But yeah, we're going to give you guys the full preparation (laughs) kit on how to prepare this early for Star Wars Celebration, including getting your tickets, hotels, and all that stuff. So tune in on Thursday and enjoy your weeks until then. Thanks for being a part of the Resistance. We'll see you Thursday morning right here on the Resistance broadcast. We'll see you around, kids. Bye. Fuck off. <laughs> what? <laughs>